Luck is a matter of preparation meeting opportunity. What is up guys, Kevin Cage here with another XRP update. Got a really interesting video for you today and I just want to kick things off saying thank you so much for all the positive feedback in my most recent video yesterday. Really appreciate it and I hope you guys found that valuable. So we're going to be going over some very interesting things today, including this patent that is owned by Ripple, but I want to discuss the Bitcoin price chart. And I know I tweeted this earlier, just saying FYI, we still haven't had our blow off the top moment yet. Go back and look at essentially the historical data of the Bitcoin price chart and even even altcoins that were around during this period. You can see that they had this parabolic move and then we repeat this several times. So this has happened more than once. So whether you are more so just a fundamentalist or you're a technical analyst, I think we can agree that we have yet to go and have that big blow off the top moment. Now I know some assets, including VeChain, have done you know a 100x in a period of a year, but there's many other alts that have yet to even reach their all-time high price at the very least, let alone some of these Fibonacci retracement levels. So let's just check this Bitcoin price chart out on the weekly and I know many analysts typically are drawing some type of trend line just showing this overall trend and this is a macro trend now I just sloppily drew this here and you can see just watching checking just showing it creating support resistance and just kind of riding all the way up so I think this is a valid trend line on the weekly on the Bitcoin price chart on Bitstamp now looking at these parabolic moves we finally break through and create new all-time highs moving up almost 2,000% right there and this is in March 2013 coming down, doing this little retracement in this type of recovery. And notice this recovery, and then finally breaking through, creating a new all-time high, and moving essentially from, at least right here, a good 900% move. Then we enter another bear market, consolidate, accumulate, move, you know, move, move, move start challenging up to that all-time high we move again and break through and then do essentially a 2000 percent move yet again and that is the day that we know when bitcoin essentially almost hit twenty thousand dollars in 2017 and then after that what happened well bitcoin started coming down BTC dominance came down and all of that money, that volume came in and pushed our altcoins up. Now, this is the most well-known altcoin market because this kind of got the most attention, but there was previous altcoin booms in early 2017 as well. And we can look at the XRP price chart as well, but you guys, I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's very similar. It doesn't start all the way back to the same extent, but it does pick up exactly where Bitcoin left off. Same thing for a lot of assets, including I'd say Zcash as well. So we're watching this and just watching this trend line and just watching how it moves 2000% and thus far, even from here, not even breaking from all time high. I mean, we really haven't even gotten started yet. So, you know, 500%, that's great. And I understand that there should be diminishing returns. Um, I know some people may disagree um, or, you know, maybe some people consider the stock to flow model, but nonetheless, I just don't think that this is it for Bitcoin overall. Now we're here zoomed in a bit more on the Bitcoin price chart. Before I show you an even more interesting look from another person, I just wanted to show you this trend. Now, conservatively speaking, yes, we held it here. We went above it, well above it here, but then came back even below it. So this is a trend. It does not mean it has to be married to it or glued to it at all times, but it does act like a magnet. And of course, we even closed above, came below, holding that 30K region of support for now. The question is, are we going to go below 20K or are we going to make our way and get one more big push towards these levels? So let me know your thoughts down below. We're simply going to have to wait and see. Now I'd like to show you this person's trading view chart really quick. Coin Coffee or Coffee on Bike on Twitter. I really like this look as well. So it's essentially a trend line like this, but just a tad higher. So the upper channel as well. So let's check this out. It's right here. This is the Bitcoin US dollar chart on the monthly on Bitstamp. So same exchange. And as we can see, this is just the overall trend of the recent all-time highs of the market gauging where that would be and it looks like we're on essentially wave two if we've completed it for the elliott wave so very curious and essentially saying that you know we're seeing something similar to what we saw in 2013 now i believe this could absolutely ring true and we have to understand it's never going to look the same but it very well may rhyme so i like this look a lot and of course this is a very strong ascending channel and i'm assuming most of the people that panic sold during this probably bought back during this also wanted to show you the DAG chart, the DAG price chart, absolutely beautiful. This is Constellation. Let me delete this little Fibonacci retracement I have here. Now this is DAG and Tether on the daily. Let me actually go to a weekly and give you a better view. But overall, look at this beautiful ascending channel, similar to what I just showed you with Bitcoin, believe it or not, and we're coming up and testing this. Now we're gonna see if we can break through or if it rejects and we're gonna come up for another test. I would like the bullish case, of course, because the nodes will be going live soon. So if you guys are interested in securing yourself a DAG node, you do need to acquire 
250,000 tokens. Currently, the price is right here, about five and a half cents, up 26%. And, you know, I'm not really phased by this. Um, I know everybody's really happy when we, you know, bounce 20%, but keep in mind, we are almost, we are at 10 cents. So came back down. Let's get back up there and create a new all-time high. And this trend is from essentially the all-time low of March 2020. We'll take a quick look on the weekly and just look at this. And of course, as this asset was coming down, really got started in January doing a 600% move from you know the bottom up to here. That is absolutely beautiful. And then we came down and even back tested this previous level of the previous all time high in August 2020. So I personally did not think we were ever going to back test this level. And it just goes to show you can never speak in absolute. So I was wrong. I could have definitely had an opportunity to potentially double or triple my bag but I just continue to hold of course because most of us were in this a lot earlier but just wanted to show that very interesting in watching this trend I call this the stairway to heaven and just so you guys know I was an early buyer of H bar um, I'm not any type of whale by any means but H bar Hedera Hashgraph is a type of DAG and I really really like it and as we know that they were looking or being looked at um, by the Department of Defense as well, kind of exploring uh, grids for smart cities. I know King Solomon found all the documents. Very, very interesting. Well, DAG, the reason I like this hidden little gem constellation is because it's one of the few organizations actively working with active contracts with the DOD of the United States. So very interesting. I think it's well worth your time to at least take a look at this technology. And they have a very interesting roadmap ahead. You can even purchase DAG right in their Stargazer wallet, which is a Chrome extension that I utilize as well. So this is one of my lower cap assets that I'm really excited for to hold for the future. Next up, before going over the XRP information, we do have iTrust Capital listing Yearn Finance. So this is available in your crypto IRAs. Keep in mind, all profits, if you have a Roth IRA like myself, will be entirely tax-free. So links are in the video description to get your first month free as well. If you want to read a little write-up they have available, and there's plenty of other digital assets. And I believe there's going to be much more on the way by end of year. Okay, now to get into the good stuff, guys, shared by X underscore Anderson. We have a patent by Evan Schwartz, very recognizable name. We have Stefan Thomas, the former CTO of Ripple, also the co-creator of Interledger, Interledger Protocol, ILP, which is huge. And of course, we are familiar with their connections to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Moja Loop. And of course, who's on the Interledger Foundation board? Costa Paddock, Costa or Constantine. He's the gentleman that architected the literally SwiftNet. So you can't make this stuff up and you know you can validate all of this on LinkedIn right now. He's sitting on the board of Interledger, the Interledger Foundation. So, of course, Stefan Thomas is one of the creators of this, and he's also the CEO of Coil, guys. And Coil is all about web monetization, streaming of payments using XRP and the XRP ledger. So remember, David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple today, has been quoted to even say that excuse me, web monetization, I should say micropayments, could arguably be one of the biggest use cases in crypto assets, specifically for payments. So something to keep an eye on. Do not forget about that because micropayments and real-time payments is coming. Imagine utilizing car insurance or watching Netflix and you pay as you go rather than just a monthly flat rate. The you know potential, the possibilities are truly limitless. So just wanted to highlight that. But anyways, we have this patent, this loop transfer in a resource transfer system. Now this is dated back a while ago and I did retweet this if you wanna check this out. It was shared on June 21st. We can see this from 2016, but keep in mind pool, loop, we, we remember a lot of the verbiage with even XPool with XRP and this is owned by, of course, Ripple. So Ripple Luxembourg. So very interesting. If you guys have you know any insight with this, please let me know, but very, very curious with regards to what this means. And also, I also wanted to highlight this and shout out Let's see, where is she? The real, yep, right here. So all the money, real Lisa Daily. Thank you for sharing this. Absolutely love this document. I know we've gone over it a few times, but this is so important to understand. So she shares this by Adrian Hope Bailey. And this gentleman was at Ripple in the past as well. And I wanna show you some interesting tidbits talking about accepting. Now Interledger is essentially a protocol created by Ripple. And of course you have a protocol, ILP. You have the ledger, XRP ledger, and then you have a digital asset to be that medium of exchange or that bridge asset or transfer of value, XRP. Now check this out. So just kind of speeding through this, talking about um, essentially the fragmentation in the payment system today. And this is still an issue today. And of course, we've heard, let's see, um, Apple has been quoted to say, and even Stefan Thomas shared this, Apple called, it was either um, ILP or it was uh, a coil. They called it the Amazon Prime of payments. 
that is the biggest compliment I, I could ever imagine. So, of course, Ripple documents have actively shown Airbnb, Uber, or Amazon back in the day, and typically you need permission to show them in your illustration. So you guys can imagine, of course, Google Ventures is an early investor in the company Ripple. So just kind of looking at these payment options to see the fragmentation that's existing today, speeding through this. Um, and we're going to kind of scroll through this quickly, and I want to show you a few things. So 2% of Tanzanians have a bank account. Okay, so there's a huge population of unbanked and underbanked, typically around 3 trillion people in total that are underbanked, I should say. We have 32%, though, actually have a mobile money account. Interesting. So don't really have bank accounts in those regions, but those that don't, they typically have a mobile money account. Very interesting, is it not? And so you guys can see a lot of groups like M-Pesa, we've talked about their connection as well with um, even Mojo Loop and Interledger Protocol, no surprise. And uh, I believe even uh, XLM with Stellar. But nonetheless, the payment space is highly fragmented today. You can see Venmo, which I'm sure a lot of people in the United States are familiar with. Um, you can see, you know, Alipay. Remember what we talked about yesterday with, of course, um, Dlocal, Dlocal, and then, of course, M-Pesa. So there's a lot of these groups, but they can't really interoperate, meaning they can't settle money um, and, you know, value together interchangeably in real time. So payment networks today, this is the problem. We're disconnected. You have banks that are, have payment networks in their own ledger accounting of who owns what. You know, you have blockchains now. We have mobile money accounts. And you also have online wallets with all these crazy applications and things that exist today. Blockchain, although it's great, and blockchain is nothing more than a basic accountant, accounting system that can change the game forever, there's still an issue. We're missing the secret sauce, so to speak. Well, we need internetworking, you know, between networks or, you know, interledger between ledgers for payment networks. So now we need something, a protocol to connect banks, blockchains, what, whether that's XRP, Ledger, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, anything, to mobile money, to online wallets. Enter interledger, internetworking for money, internetworking for value. And this is why this is such a big deal. So let me kind of speed through this really quick. And then we'll call it a day with this. And then I want to talk about Flare Network. So overall, the adoption strategy. Mentioning with micropayments, Codius, still alive and well, believe it or not. We have digital assets mentioned such as XRP and Ethereum. Central Bank's Bank of England, which is a paid RippleNet client. We have blockchains such as Hyperledger Quilt. Beautiful. And remember um, recent news, I think it's been less than six months, with uh, Amazon Quantum Ledger Database. We have the mobile money, Mojo Loop, which is essentially backed by Bill and Melinda Gates. And then we have, you know, connecting to banks as well, you have Ripple. And friendly reminder, Ripple is after wholesale, not retail. That is a lot. That's big money, guys. That is interbank settlement between central banks. Very, very big money. OK, and we're not talking about retail CBDCs. Um, of course, there's utility there and there's a lot of assets that can target that. XRP is targeting wholesale interbank settlements. That is big money. So just wanted to share that. And you have some very recognizable names here. All right. Marketplaces we could go on and on as well. Next. So, of course, this is the Flare Networks blog post, just kind of laying out some recent information as well. And uh, essentially all the drama that's been happening recently. I'm sure you guys are kept up to date with all of that, with the distribution, then the voting and governance and bickering on Twitter between the community members. Um, just chaos. But anyways, I'm still excited for this to go live. And speaking of this, we have 10 billion Spark right here. They're set up to reward users that mint F assets. So this is overall just the F asset FXRP incentive pool. So this will be given out is rewards for anybody that is minting F assets and providing liquidity to Flare Networks. So instead of just, you know, delegating your vote to an FTSO provider, this is another opportunity for us to earn a passive yield or passive income. Just like when I mentioned DAG nodes, helping, you know, validate and, you know, um, secure the network, same concept applies. There's a lot of ways to generate passive income in cryptocurrency. All right. Speaking of 10 billion, with the 10 billion spark, we have Tranglo. Now, no, notice this, and we have ODL right here. And no surprise, why? Well, Tranglo is mentioning XRP and ODL right here because Ripple acquired a 40% stake in them in Asia's leading cross border payment specialist. And this is back in March. So there's always plans, always watching. We're going to simply have to wait and see. And of course, do not forget about Ripple's line of credit either. So right here, while most of the 10 billion US dollar market in remittances to Indonesia were made on existing payment rails, growing acceptance of digital currency and influx of global firms like Ripple are changing the payments landscape. 
absolutely beautiful. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.